So welcome back friends to part two of the top 50 tools, top 50 tools that every man should have. Today we're gonna to be covering number 11 through 20. This will be part two of a five part series. And man, I'm excited. A lot of good responses, a lot of really great inputs. Now remember that this is a living video here uh, and I haven't completely made my mind up. I was hoping to have all of the final decisions made in the last video. So if you have things uh, in your life that is, have just been absolute go-to, that have a really good uh, versatility, put them in the comments because uh, you could sway me. And if you change my mind, I'll give you honorable mention in that as well. So let's jump right into it. One of the most interesting tools that we're all familiar with, and usually uh, li life is not good when you have to resort to this, but uh, is the Maddox. The Maddox. I remember as a kid uh, spending a lot of time swinging one of these. This is actually a very fascinating tool. What it is, is it's a, it's a digging or a grubbing tool. And it has a really interesting history. There's actually been um, archaeologists that have, uh, have found versions of this dating back to the Bronze Age. That's the Greeks. Uh, that they would use something like this. And you know, we take these things for granted and they lean against a, a garden shed wall and we don't realize how many thousands and thousands of years of evolution have went into making this tool as efficient as possible. It really is incredible. A couple of interesting things about them. So Maddox is, is, is different in, the, in a lot of wood tool handles in that it doesn't have a fixed handle. And you'll see that if you strike it like this, it's designed to be taken apart uh, so it's easy to pack because it's kind of a big heavy thing and not so much important nowadays where we can take tools and throw them in the back of a pickup. But you know, if you were transporting this uh, on, a hor on horseback or a mule or you were a miner, having the ability for this to break down into two pieces uh, was, was something that was really handy because this is, this is an awkward shape. So the design of course is, is when you got to where you were going, you would give it a strike on a stump or a rock and seat the head. Now there's a couple different patterns with these Maddoxes. You'll see some that have a spike on them like here, out here. Like out here west, these are really, really popular because this spike is really great for dealing with rocks. And that's why you see that it's the, the handle on it is so massive, it's so heavy, it's intended to be used as a prying tool. So this, when you're trying to dig trench for latrine or, or water line or, or what, what, whoever, you know, grave, <laughs> grave digger, uh, you can wedge this, this heavy hardened pick down into the uh, ground and dislodge rocks. On the back we have, you know, a, a grubbing type of a hoe right there. So you can flip it over and when you get into some soft dirt, you can actually move a lot of dirt. This is when, uh, this is the tool that takes, takes the place when the shovel just can't get it done. A shovel works fine in, in looser stuff, but when you get hard compacted soil, a uh, shovel just doesn't do you much good. Also, there's another variant of this. You'll often see these that have, well, they basically have a little ax blade on them, which are very similar uh, to a Pulaski, but much heavier duty, more robust, more, more, uh, more, a more durable tool. And you're gonna find those tools uh, pr 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 predominantly in areas that have more woody stuff. Like if you were in like a lot of brushy, woody stuff where you're digging through a lot of roots, um, that type of Maddox is actually much better. So before you buy one, kind of ascertain, you know, what type of ground you're gonna be in. Do you have a lot of rocks that you have to pick through? A, a nice spike like this would be a, the better choice. If you have a lot of roots and that sort of thing, well, you know, maybe, maybe the ax one would be a little bit better. But also, you know, I, I, back in the day, I don't know if this is still true, um, the, the East Coast guys would, would usually put a bolt or a screw through here because there is some danger with a Maddox and it's, the, the old timers would tell you, never operate a Maddox higher, don't let the, the head come higher than your hands. And the reason is, is that this thing will work loose and if you lift this up like a splitting maul, it, this thing will slide down before you can set and it'll really hurt your hands and smash your hands. So the rule of thumb when you would teach a, an apprentice when you're using a Maddox like this or a friction fit tool is to never allow it, uh, never let it go higher uh, than your hands. Um, so anyway, the East Coast guys would typically put a screw through there to protect him. West Coast, that was never done. So just kind of another one of those interesting regional things, but a good quality Maddox 
uh, is, uh, is a must-have. And remember, I, I'm going through and I'll put links to my choices on these, the Amazon affiliate links in the subject heading, um, and I've done a lot of research on these, what I think is a really good value. So if you find yourself, you've got a few deficits or some holes in your, in your tools set up, uh, you can go there and it'll give you a place to start. All right, next, number two. Boy, that, that went on. I could do a whole video on Maddox. <laughs> Maddox, a good rope. This is something that is probably overlooked uh, by most guys that I come in contact with. Um, very few people have, I'm talking about a good one. I'm not talking about a crummy Home Depot one. What you want for a rope is you want a good nylon braided rope that's a static rope, meaning it doesn't have any stretch to it. Don't buy a climbing rope. Climbing ropes are, are wonderful ropes, but they're, they're intended to really stretch. To, so when a rock climber falls, uh, that, that it's not shocking or jarring you. Where a repelling rope or a, a working rope, a big heavy bull rope like this one here, is going to be static, meaning that there's no stretch going to be in it. You don't, want the, you don't want the stretch. There's applications for that, but just for a general purpose, all around, you don't want it. The length that you want, you want, I just hate, hate to say it, 50 meters. You want a 50 meter rope, which comes out to roughly, what, 150, 160 feet. It's a standard length um, for ropes and it gives you the ability to do so much. 150, 160 feet is a long ways. So what do you need a rope for? Well, let's say you have livestock. What happens if you get, you know, or an animal or something that's stuck out in a, in a bog or, or in the mud or, or for rescuing something? And, and even if you double and triple these up in a pinch, they can be used for vehicle recovery. I mean, it's not recommended all the time, but for all the bazillion things that I can't think of, if you need to take a tree down uh, and you want to climb up there and put a rope on it just to be sure that it's not going to fall on your house or on a shed, uh, we can't even go into it. I mean, the importance of having a good quality rope. This is what I have found to be the best value for, for buying quality rope is go to the arborist uh, sites like uh, Tree Stuff. Is it treestuff.com? I'll, I'll see if I can remember to put a link in there. This is a, a bull rope that's just what they sell there for is for pulling trees, the arborists use for pulling trees over. It's very long, it's very, very strong, it's very durable, and it, you're gonna have that full length, that, that 50 meter length. Um, and it's just, a, you, you gotta have it. It's not something you're gonna use all the time, but when you need it, you need it. And it was important enough for me uh, to include it as our um, a 12th, 12th item out of 50. All right. 12, number 13, no doubt, a pipe wrench. And this size right here, what size is that? An eight inch? Good grief, I don't even know the size. There's it say right there. Uh, drop forged, it doesn't say. I was thinking, maybe, maybe it's, I don't know how big it is. I'll, anyway, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the description. Um, some of the best ones that I've used are made by a rigid, rigid company make really good professional grade ones or they used to. Uh, this is a Husky brand, a Home Depot brand. And when I looked at them, when I bought this years ago, they looked very similar. So I almost thought that maybe rigid made, um, the pipe wrenches for Huskies. This is a must have, must tool, must have tool. No question about it. Um, I've got a couple of them. I rarely use more than one, but if I need to, to get something loose, uh, that's really tight. I've, I've used this to, to take off so many trailer balls and I've put uh, two and three foot extension cheater bars on these things. I've never broke one before. They're really, they're really, really tough. Uh, they, they do get a little bit worn out. Uh, the teeth right here, it's really important that these teeth are sharp. And what you can take, in, you can take a little triangle file and you can clean those up there. But if you buy a good quality one, a rigid or, or a husky, or there's lots of them out there, um, this will last you a long time. But this is a must have. This will, uh, I've gotten oil filters off with them. I have um, any type of threaded pipe. You have to have them a million, million different things. And this is your kind of your go to wrench when you run out of sizes. You know, when you run out of anything big enough, you, you know, you find sometimes you got some enormous nut on something and you've got nothing to fit it. It's either this or a pair of channel locks, and it always comes down to this because this is a, just a, an incredible design uh, that uh, will do just do about everything way outside of it, it. It lives way outside of the plumbing world. So we got number 13, a good quality plumbing wrench, pipe wrench. All right. Number 14, a pair of needle nose pliers. Needle nose pliers, just like these. These are the, these are the good ones. Again, they're, they're not something that I use a lot, 
but but every once but it's the only tool that saves the day sometimes i've dropped things down in holes i was able to you know to get it out with uh, or for do, doing fine work or small stuff a detail stuff or getting into places where nothing else will work um, this is the, about the only tool that will work and they also you know just as a side i forgot to mention the other day as a side of benefit all of these tools like this, you want to make sure you look for one that's got a, a, a wire cutter on the side. It just gives you an extra extra capability. Like the channel locks that I spec'd out, those have cutters. Your regular pliers have cutters. And as I was looking around and looking at my toolbox, I really like the channel lock brand. Um, and the reason being is that they're still made in the United States. They're really a good USA company, and they offer a good tool with a great warranty um, that is a wonderful price. Sometimes I just marvel at how cheap uh, their multi-packs are, where you can buy like the, the channel locks and five or six different tools uh, for really a reasonable price. And, and I'm just a big fan of the channel lock brand. I think that they give a tremendous value, uh, and, and they're a good tool. I and mean, I've just got lots of them around here. I don't, don't ever remember breaking one, but a good set of needle nose pliers just like this, that's going to make, uh, what we got, number 14. All right, what we got here? All right, so hacksaw, number 15. You're going to want a hacksaw. What a hacksaw is, if you don't know, is, is it's a metal cutting blade. It's a way for you to be able to cut. You could cut through any sort of metal, as long as it's the throat's not deeper than the throat right there. It may take a long time, but you can cut cable. Uh, you could cut uh, non-ferrous, you can cut ferrous, you can cut just about everything and make sure you get a good quality blade. Now, if you buy a discount hacksaw, they're going to usually come with a pack of a whole bunch of, different, bunch of different blades and they'll be all different colors. Those blades are usually not very good. So put those blades in your toolbox for emergency use, but get yourself some really good quality ones like a Lennox or something. If it's expensive, it's gonna be good. You know, I mean, when you go to the hardware store and one blade is $7 and when one blade is three for $2, you know, there's usually a purpose to that. So look for a good USA or German or Swiss built blade, get a couple of them, get three or four of them, throw them in the kit. It's probably for most guys, uh, it's gonna last you a long time. This is gonna be the tool when, I mean, when you've got to cut metal, around your house, uh, how are you gonna do it? It's, it's not easy to do. If you don't have torches and you don't have a bunch of power tools and stuff, you can cut everything you need. You can cut bolts with this. If you have, uh, are trying to fix something and you got a bolt and it's too long, you, know, you can take and put it in your vise and you can cut it out or cut a piece of cable or a million different things. So you want a hacksaw, not used all the time, um, but as essential tool. And that's why it's gonna be number 15. Number 15 is the hacksaw. So can I have 30 seconds of your time to shamelessly promote our, our uh, a Christmas special? We have a Christmas special for you guys. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, is, is our book, Modern Homesteading, Rediscovering the American Dream. Uh, Mrs. W and I co-wrote this um, recently and it tells our story for moving out of the city uh, in our journey and our failures and successes um, and what it took for us uh, to get here. Um, so what we have, what we're offering is, is we have uh, a package for two books you get two books, free shipping, and you get the 2018 brand new, all new calendar, the Wrangler Star calendar, with lots of nice pictures. So pictures that uh, we took from the family, there's pictures, we've got, we've brought back the, the, the map of our, of our homestead, and we've got uh, each month you can enjoy all of the, <laughs> all of the wonderful homesteading pictures. This is Mrs. W on the, on the riding lawnmower, so you get the calendar. And there was some complaints that the calendar last year didn't have a hole in it for hanging, hanging it up. So we apologize for that. We've made those corrections. This year's calendar will have a hole in it. So I gotta wrap this up. So two books and the official 2018 Wrangler Star calendar for $32, free shipping. So we're gonna cover all the shipping for you. So if you're looking for a good gift idea for family or friends, uh, you can get two books in the calendar, free shipping, $32. I'll put the link down in the subject heading for that. So thanks, let's get back to the video. All right, tape measure. Of course, a tape measure. Boy, there's a, back, back for years and years and years, the only player in the game was Stanley. Stanley uh, has made tape measures for a long, long time. Now everyone's making them. Um, I've been using some tape measures from Milwaukee and DeWalt's got their own tape measures all coming out right now. I like the Stanleys. This is my favorite tape measure. It's funny, you know, I don't know if, if I'm just, if I'm just 
so brand specific or, or there's that tradition that I grew up using them that I am just kind of a homer for Stanley tape measures. I don't think so um, because I can use any tape measure I want. I've got a dozen of them around here and sometimes I'll even go look, seek this one out. Like even if I have to walk, walk for, further uh, to go get a tape measure, <laughs> if I'm going to be using it all day, I'll, I'll go for this one. I love this 25 foot Fast Max, the Fat Max tape. It's super durable. I'd recommend the 25s over the 30s. Uh, well, not so much anymore. Back, back years ago, they used to cram a 30-foot tape inside a 25-foot housing, and so you'd get that extra feet, extra few feet, five feet, um, but it came at a cost as not wanting to go back in as well. I think they don't do that anymore. I think maybe the 25 and the 30 have different size housings, but check that out when you're buying one. If you're looking at them and they both look like the same case and one's 25 and one's 30, uh, just go with the 25. You don't need more than 25. If you have to measure over that, uh, you can you know just pull it out and, and measure twice. You know, But the 25 Fat Max in the Stanley is a great tape. I've dropped this off of scaffolding. I've dropped it off of ladders. I've had this a long, long time. It is my favorite. And I, when, I, when this one dies, this is the exact one that I'll buy again. I really like them. They're really good. All right, what we got next here? What was that? 17, 18, doesn't matter. All right, so there's gonna be a power tool, a few power tools you're gonna to have to have. Without a doubt, probably one of the greatest inventions in the last, what, 40 years, 30 years, how long has it been, is the cordless drill. And they're, they're getting good now. I mean, there's so much competition from all the major manufacturers that the, it just seems like every year they just get better and better and better. Longer battery life, smaller in size, more power. You can't hardly get by without a cordless drill. I'm gonna spec out mostly corded tools on this video series. I believe, I believe, this is probably one of the only cordless tools I'm gonna to recommend because the problem with the cordless tools is, is that they are, they're throwaway. They're, they're not, um, they're just not going to, to last you, you know, I would say for really light use, you know, maybe 10 years, before, that's pushing it for the batteries. I'd say probably closer to five or six. And then the batteries are just so expensive and the technology moves on that it's just, it's cheaper to buy a new one. So these are kind of disposable, but they're, they're just indispensable. They're absolutely indispensable. I, I, it was, it's probably of all of these 50 tools, uh, it would be one of the, it would be on my top 10, probably in my top five, uh, if I was to be honest with you. But uh, what brand? You choose. Um, I, I have tested quite a, uh, quite a few of these, uh, some of the lower end ones. With the, ones that, the one that's been the best so far has been the Milwaukee. Uh, the Milwaukee, and, and I really like the Makita. I've been reluctant to test the Milwaukee with the Makita because I'm afraid that it's going to burn up my Makita that I really, <laughs> really like. I probably should just do it for science, right? Just for you guys. Um, but uh, lots of good ones. Of course, the higher end DeWalt's are nice, but uh, if you're gonna, you're gonna pay $100, $150 for a good drill, make sure you get two batteries, two batteries and, and the drill bit kit. And, um, but a cordless drill is, a, is essential. It'd be nice to have the cordless drill and the impact wrench, but we can't have both because we just don't have room in our kit. So if I have to make a choice, I'm gonna choose the cordless drill, even though I use the impact drill more, or impact wrench more, but the impact wrench, I can't really drill holes very well and chuck things up and mix paint. And this is more versatile, more versatile. So a cordless, a good quality lithium brushless cordless drill. That's what you want. All right. What do we have next? Where we're getting down there. Two more. Number 19, pair of tin snips. Tin snips, and you want the yellow handled ones, or this is the Wisp brand. I, I, I mentioned in a previous video that I really like the Wisp brand. I think that they were the pro ones back in the day. I don't think they are anymore. I think they're kind of more homeowner grade. But for, I, I'm not a sheet metal guy. I'm not a tin, tin knocker. Um, so I don't need the latest greatest, and these have always served me well. I've, I've, I've had several pair of them. Um, and what are these gonna be good for? These are gonna be cut, anything time you need to cut sheet metal. Uh, like that, you're, you're, you're able to do it that, with that. I mean, they really work amazing if you haven't used them before. You can cut through thin gauge sheet metal uh, just like a pair of scissors uh, in, in thick paper. Now, they really are amazing. And you'll find yourself use them for cutting um, banding. You know, you get something delivered that's got a bunch of metal banding around it. You know, that's not, that's not an easy thing to deal with if you don't have something to cut it with. 
You know, if you don't have a grinder and you don't have a pair of tin snips or way, way to cut that, I mean, you, you're kind of up a creek. It's, steel is hard. Uh, it takes very specialized tools to deal with it. So you have a couple different things here. You know, you could get through it with your hacksaw, but of course the better tool is going to be the, um, the tin snips. Now they're going to come in different configurations and they have different colored handles. There's a red one and then there's a green one. There's probably more than that. And those are right hand and left handed ones. The yellow handled one is the one is just a straight. It's not made for cutting around a circle uh, or a right hand or a left hand. Those other ones are, are more specific. So just as we can't have all of them, you know, we have to, we have to limit this at 50. Uh, if you're just going to have one, you want the yellow handled ones. Uh, this is the one to go with. But a pair of tin snips uh, is, is going to be essential. And to round up number 20, 20 of 50, what do we have in here? I might have to bring you up closer for this one because they're kind of small, but uh, I, I'll do that. Let me, just, let me just talk about it a little bit. A set of center punches. Center punches, this is a must have, and, and I, I can't, we can't just have one. They kind of come in a set, so you need a set. So what I found to be about one of the most useful is, is one about, uh, about you know, maybe a 10 inch long or so uh, with a taper on it um, and a point. So there's, that, that's the one I seem to use more than anyone, uh, any other ones. And then I'll have a couple different sizes. You want to kind of size them down and you've got, you know, you've got your tapered, and then you've got your straight punches. So these are my, these are kind of my go-to. Those are actually the same size. This one here is a center punch. So the difference is, is you'll see that the tips on these, so these, some of these have a point on them. So if you need to get, um, uh, knock something over or bend a tab over, if you need to bite into metal or you need to mark metal, uh, mark a hole for drill press or drilling, then that's what that center punch is for. It's got that point on it. If you're just using it for drifting, for pushing pins out or knocking things into out of holes and all that, then a flat one is, <clears throat> is what you want. Now you've got, see how these have a taper on them? You want uh, a handful of them, let's say three. I could probably get by with, with these three right here would be a good, good size right there, uh, right there with a taper. And then we're gonna have our center punches a set which are flat. Or, or, or the same all the way through. I'm sorry, I don't know all the, all the nomenclature here. And about three of those as well, down to a little one. So if you need to push a, a little roll pin out of something, if you need to, to drift, uh, who knows what, a million different things uh, that you just have to have them, or even trying to line things up. One thing is when you have like two things, two holes that you're trying to to line, line up and you can't quite get it right. One of these guys, especially this long one, and you can drive it in there and as you drive it in, it gets it closer and closer, you know, to the opposite side and then you can usually get a bolt going in there. But um, can't go into every reason why you're gonna want these or need them, but you want, you definitely want them. So I'll put together a little set, but if you could get six of them, if you could just get a little tiny one, small one for like little roll pins, think of little roll pins and keepers and such, a medium and a larger one and then a corresponding set with the tapered ones. And also one, you want one that's got a point on it, at least one for marking. And then a larger, longer one like this is, is one that real, is really a go-to uh, punch right there. So that's kind of a nice little center punch set.